once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And as always, on behalf of Alice, Mark, and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only name given by which men can be saved, the name above all names. Hallelujah. Amen. The Word who has made flesh and dwelt among us. And that's our purpose, is to spend time here in the Word, that we might see Jesus, the Word, more clearly. Um, because the word, you know, the promise of God is that he will lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he uses his word to do it, right? Right. Quickened by the Holy Spirit. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If you're not being led by the word, you're not being led by the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's the name of that game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're continuing on in our study of the prophet Amos. We left off, we're in the fifth chapter. And we're going to be starting in this study in verse 16 and 17. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Mark to ask God's blessing on our time together. And then I want to do something from another prophet before we start. Okay. So let's have a little <clears throat> prayer to kick it off. Oh, Lord, we thank you for being here. And you, we thank you for gui guiding us in this Bible study. And just we thank you for your word and just show us how to apply it to our lives so we can better serve you. Amen. 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 Um, we are in Amos, but I, I did want to just read a verse from another prophet mm -hmm. before we start. So let me just read this. You don't have to go to or anything, right? Okay. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near. That's Joel, chapter 2, verse 1. I've said all along in the study of Amos, this is an end times prophet. Mm -hmm. Certainly it was. He was speaking to the people. God was speaking through him to the people of his time. But it was addressing, as the prophets always do, more than that. And it is an end times message. And we are living in an end times world. Mm -hmm. I don't know the day and the hour by any means. Only the Father knows. But I certainly see signs. And, and one of the signs is the one that Peter said would happen when he said in the last days, mockers would come with their mocking saying, where is the promise of his coming? It's always been like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. It hasn't always been like this. No, no, no. Okay. So let's go to Amos chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, the Lord there is wailing in all the plazas, in all the streets, they say, alas, alas. They also call the farmer to mourning and the professional mourners to lamentation. And in all the vineyards, there is wailing, because I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. Hmm. Well, wailing in all the uh, plazas and in all the streets, they say, alas, alas. If you have a clue what's going on. Now, I, I, we happen to be in touch with folks in a number of different countries where we minister, right? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we were just on uh, a video call for about an hour with some friends over in Leeds, England. And they're having their own situations over there for sure. But here in the United States of America, there is wailing in the streets. Yes, there is. There is confusion everywhere, mm -hmm. all right? And God says... There's wailing because I will pass through the midst of you. Okay. What's going on is in the world, there's not good news. No. Not, a, not a message or a report of love, but of hate, mm -hmm. uh, of confusion and distress. Not peace and safety, but conflict and pain. That's what you constantly hear from the world around us, all right? Mm -hmm. Here in the U.S. Right. And the Lord says, I will pass through the midst of you. You know, in Egypt, does this not bring your mind back to bondage in Egypt, mm -hmm. right? In Egypt, the Lord passed through the land and passed over his people. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to pass through the midst. And yes, there is a difference. Their deliverance in, back in Egypt came from the fact they were obedient to the command of the Lord to trust in the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Is that not true? Yes. 
That's what the Passover was. That's what the Passover is today, is a celebration of God's providing life by the blood of the Lamb. It says in Psalm 23, verse 4, a verse you probably all are very familiar with, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. My, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Right? Psalm 23, 4. Because of the presence of God. Because he is with us. Yes. And he is with his bondservants, with his, with his people, with his Jesus, with his brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. the Father watching over his children. All right? We're assured of his presence being with us. Yes. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's his promise. So what does it mean to pass through, to walk on by? Hmm. Well, I was just thinking like if there's a crowd and you walk through the crowd. You don't stay. You're walking you're, through. You're walking through you. The yeah. presence of God should be our great, great delight, right? And we're walking with him. Mm -hmm. So we, we can be safe and secure from all alarm because of the presence of the Lord. Yes. For thou art with me. And that mm -hmm. rod and I staff, they come from me, right? It's the presence of God that gives us that security and peace. The danger is to be placing your trust in all of the religious activities, trusting in the rituals and relics of, of religion, mm -hmm. all which can be done without his presence. Yes, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. And that would lead to being blinded to the danger and even unaware of his absence. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Well, like it, it, Laodicea. It, like Laodicea, <laughs> she says. <clears throat> because when Jesus wrote the letters to the seven churches, he spoke to the church at Laodicea, the last church in the Bible, and he was standing outside, remember this, mm -hmm. separated from the crowd yes. inside. And he said, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, spew you, vomit mm -hmm. you, spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may become rich, and white garments that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and I salve to anoint your eyes that you may see. All right, Revelation 3, verses 16 to 18. They were blind they were unconscious of his absence. Mm -hmm. Not not true. He's outside. Yes. What are they doing inside? Well, they think they're having great times. That's what they say. We have need of nothing. We got everything. They were blind and unaware. And pride will always lead those blind eyes to see nothing but themselves. And to boast and trust in their own works. I was thinking when you said... Um that they, he said to them to buy gold. Now, what he gave to us was a free gift to yes. those who received and accepted it. Is he being, like, I don't know, say sarcastic there? Oh, no, he's not being sarcastic. Because they, he, 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 they're not receiving him. No, they, they have not received him. No. They, now, the Church of Laodicea was certainly a church at one point. Right. I believe that it's just an assembly of people because... The promise of God is, if two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. Right. Well, they were gathered, but they certainly weren't gathered in his name because right. he wasn't in their midst. Right. Right? So they have, they now, having once received the gift of salvation, do they have to buy it back? That's my question, yeah. Yes, what's the cost? Self. Ah. Because he still offers. He's standing at the door knocking, and he's still offering. But they've got to repent. They've got to die to themselves. Right. They have to admit their failing, their sin. They have to admit their separation exactly. from God. Right. That's the cost. Yes, yes. And, you know, is there a cost? Is repentance a cost? Well, it's a recognition. Mm -hmm. Okay? Salvation, sal the, we've all heard salvation is a free gift of God. You may have heard it because it says that in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. It's the free gift there's no cost to us, no. but it's the most expensive gift ever purchased Amen. because it cost Jesus Christ. But we can't have that without surrendering our own lives. Right. 
And that just puts me in mind, real, just to mention this real quickly, you probably all know the account of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus mm -hmm. and said that, you know, he comes to the point where he says, I want to follow you. And Jesus says, all right, go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. And it says he, he wouldn't do that. He, he couldn't do it because of his love of his, his riches, his yeah. stuff, right? The point I'm going to make is that Jesus was not trying to deprive him mm -hmm. of anything. Jesus was not trying to take from him. Because that account starts with Jesus saying, one thing do you lack? Yes. Jesus was trying to fill the one thing that he didn't have, life in mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. eternal life in Jesus. So don't be afraid to pay the price to walk in the fullness of God's promise. Yes. And that price is you. You, you know, we, we, are, we are crucified with him. Shall we all sing a chorus of I surrender all? Mm. Because you know, if we haven't surrendered all, we haven't surrendered anything. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this is not like, okay, well, I'll do 50%, I'll do 70 No, yeah. you, you, have to, you have to die to yourself. And Jesus said, no man can be my disciple unless he gives up all his possessions. All right? Okay, well, listen. These things, I, I pray that these things that we talk about here mm -hmm. give you cause to think, ponder, and pray. Not necessarily in that order. Yeah. <laughs> about what the what God is looking for in our lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, the purpose of this study is that we might recognize and know the love of God more and more. Amen, yes. But with the purpose that we would love Him more and more and more. The more we know Him, the more we love Him. Because Christianity is a love story. Yes, it is. It's a love story. Okay, I, I decided I'd crack myself here once again. I, I just it, I just happened to be going through some old files the other day, and I came across one of the Bible Bites that I did. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you don't know about the Bible Bites, go to our Bible Talk website, BibleTalk.com, and look, and you'll see we have like almost 400 of these little five, six-minute videos on there. But one of the ones I did, and this is going back quite a number of years ago, talked about when Alice and I, I think we were still living in Central America at the time, and we were visiting the church that I had started up in New York. And it was around the holidays. Uh, and when we got there, there were people in from family, in from all over. There were folks from in from California. Mm -hmm. And so we met at this brother's house, a very large house. And they were playing this game called Pictionary. Have you ever, you're familiar with Pictionary? And you divide up in, there's mm -hmm. a couple of teams. And what happens is, well, there's two teams and you pick out a card, and the card is the name of a, I guess, a, a, a like a movie or a song or something. And you have to pantomime, and your team has to guess what you're trying to communicate. Right. So it was my turn. I, like, I had never played this game before. I'm, I'm not much of a game player. But I picked out a card, and I went up to the drawing easel, and I drew a cross. That's a good start. And then your brain shut down. No. No, my no. brain did not shut His down. No, my brain did not shut down at all. But I was standing there, and so everybody on my team is saying, okay, put another clue up. Put another clue up. We need more. We need more information. And I couldn't think. Of what else to put there. What else to put up there. So they're all getting, now they're getting upset with me. Put something <laughs> else up. Put something else up. So at the, end of the, at the end of it all, when my time ran out, I hadn't put anything else up there. The card that I had was a movie title, and the movie title was Love Story. And when I had put the cross up, I couldn't think of anything more to say. Right. There was nothing else to do. What else can you say? The love story. When you're talking about a love story, and you put a picture of the cross, that, my is friend, the is story. the love story. Of course, that doesn't mean they were happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> but Christianity is about love. It's all about love. Yes. It's about, it starts with God's love poured out for us. God's love expressed in his gift of Jesus Christ to us. And it has to be reciprocated. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yes. It's about a love affair with Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, I've said this so many times. It's not about stained glass windows, pipe organs, and padded pews yeah. and great big buildings. It is about a lover relationship with Jesus Christ. Our, for we are his betrothed. Yes. All right. <clears throat> So, but, but think about where I am now, okay? It's right into that church you're late to see, which I just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they are. They're blind and unaware. Mm -hmm. they, they're saying that they have everything. And yet the thing they don't have is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
And if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. You have nothing. The thing is, they have to have the humility to realize what they don't have and open up the door. But the problem is, and he's standing here knocking at the door, right? The, pro the problem it's is, too much problem. They, they have become blind. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. I mean, you have become blind. You are blind. And they are unaware of his absence. They're not even conscious right. of the fact that he's not there. What, how does that happen? Well, the simple answer is, I think you just said it, it's pride. Yes. Because pride will lead those blind eyes to see nothing but yourself mm -hmm. and to boast and trust in your own works. Mm -hmm. think, think about this. I mean, think about what I just said, Ray. What, what it leads to is on that day when they come to Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, look what I did. That would be Matthew chapter 7, the end of the Sermon on the Mount, yes. reading from verse 22 <laughs> and 23, when Jesus said, many will come to me on that day. Lord, Lord, will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Mm. They were blind and unaware. Right? Even to the, to, when they saw him, I mean, they came face to face with him. They will come face to face, and they'll still yeah. they'll still be talking about well, themselves. And, and that is obviously pride, because if you can come in at the end of time, if you can come into the presence of the living God, of the risen Jesus Christ, standing there with outstretched arms and nail scarred hands, waiting to welcome you, mm -hmm. and say to him, "Look what I did." You're blind. You are blind. Oh my goodness. You you are blind. All right. So. This is really a, a problem, but they, they were totally unaware of their separation from right, God. Right. So don't think you can't be deceived. You can be, you can be self-deceived mm -hmm. when you are not abiding in the word with your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher, the perfecter of your faith. All right? That's, that's what I'm talking about. How do you, you, you need to be in constant touch. Our relationship, our, re, our faith is all about our relationship with God the Father through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Right. I mean, this is, and you know, a real relationship isn't about once a week or a couple of times a week. It says that Jesus said in Matthew 7, he said, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What lawlessness were they practicing? Not practicing. What lawlessness were they practicing? What law were they breaking? If you're, if you're lawless, word. which God's word? All of it. <laughs> you only need all of, yeah. what is the Love somebody the came Lord. to Jesus and said, What yes. is the foremost command? And he said, Shema Israel. Israel. Here is Israel. here Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all, what? All, all, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. All. All. You know what? There's not even room for love for yourself. No. Okay, your, all your love has to be towards him. That was the law, the great law that they were breaking. That was the lawlessness in their life. Yes. They weren't loving Jesus, they were loving themselves. Look what I did. All right, so let's, let's move along here, okay? Because that, that blindness and unaware, being unaware of the presence of Christ will result in this, all right? I'm going to read from verse 18. Uh, Alas, you are longing for the day of the Lord. For what purpose will the day of the Lord be to you? It will be darkness and not light. As when a man flees from a lion and a bear meets him, or goes home, leans his hand against the wall, and a snake bites him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness instead of light, even gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I reject your festivals, nor do I delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer up to me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And I will not even look at the peace offerings of your fatlings. Mm. Whoa. I like to pray, even so come Lord Jesus. I am looking forward to that day of the Lord. Hayom Yahweh yes. is what it is in Hebrew. That's what it is. Yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. A lot of people are looking forward to it. But when it comes, 
Will it be a day of rejoicing? Will it be a day of light? Or will it be a day of darkness? If people can be so deceived as they were in the church of Laodicea, if people can be so deceived as these were who came to Jesus boasting in their own works, well, you know what? They can be in for a very rude awakening and a very great shock on that great and terrible day of the Lord. Yes. It won't be a day of salvation, not at all. So here, and you know, we're not talking about the, the unsaved, and we're not talking about no. we're talking about within the body of Christ, people who are saying, "Well, we're you know we're looking for forward to well, they're they're all into this end time stuff." You know, it's this new, is going to happen. Revival. Yeah. Well, be on guard. Be on guard, because it may not be a pleasant thing if you are not in a right relationship with the Lord, right? That's why we need to examine ourselves every day. Well, the problem is, how do you how do you deceive yourself so badly? A little there's bit a word. At a time. <laughs> no, well, that's true, but there's an answer, a very simple one-word answer. Religion. Right. Ah, yes, yes, yeah. When you, when you begin to think that your relationship with God is based on your works, the things that you do, that you think are religion. Religion, well, it says it in James. Yeah. Yeah. Visiting widows and orphans in their distress and keeping yourself unstained from... Religion is about your relationship here on earth with other people. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is about your relationship with God, that vertical, right? Yes. And without righteousness, you can do all of the religious you want to no avail whatsoever. But you will think if you're not right with the Lord... If you are not hearing from the Spirit of God, if you are not abiding in the Word, because that's what will protect you and keep you in the truth and mm -hmm. keep you free, if you're not, you will think that your religious practice is what will keep you in a right relationship yes. with God. And that's what he's saying here. All right? And that, more than that yes. going on, right? Yeah. And think about this. In, in verse 19, it says, As when a man flees from a lion and a bear meets him, or goes home, leans his hand against the wall, and a snake bites him. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter where you go if you're disobedient. Absolutely. Right. You cannot run and you cannot hide. Deuteronomy 28, 15 and 16 says this, But it shall come about if you will not obey the Lord your God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes with which I charge you today, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed yeah. shall you be in the country. Doesn't matter where you go. If you are disobeying God, those those curses are going to find you. Right? You can't you can't run, you can't hide. By the same token, the beginning of that passage in Deuteronomy twenty eight mm -hmm. says that if you're being if you hear his voice and obey his voice, he'll bless you in the city and the bless you in the country. Everywhere you go, everything right. that you do will be blessed, all right? But you have to have that obedience. Right. In verse 21 and 22, it says, The Lord hates your festivals and your solemn assemblies. Mm -hmm. Hates them. Jeremiah, who, by the way, who loved the word, thy word was found and I ate it. It became yes. to me the joy and the delight of my heart. Jeremiah said this, chapter 7, says, For I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and you will walk in the way which I command you, that it may be well with you. He has said that over and, and over, over and, and over. over. Right. It is not about man's rituals. It is not about man's works. You know, the, the great example of that has to be the Apostle Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Or Saul of Tarsus, the Pharisee. Mm -hmm. Because before he met Jesus... He was as religious as anyone in Israel could be. <laughs> I mean, he was a Pharisee among Pharisees. Yes. He testified in his letter to, Gal to the Galatians. He said, and I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen, being more extremely zealous for my ancestral traditions. Galatians 1.4. Yes. It wasn't about the word. No. It was about the, the traditions. traditions. Much as it is in the church today. And he wrote to the Philippians saying, although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, 
If anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised the, faith, the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee. So he was as religious as you can get. But having encountered and met the risen Savior, he learned this. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It is about, our relationship with God is about returning his love. Right? Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, if you love me, keep my, my commandments. commandments. Everything that the Lord is speaking through the prophet about here in Amos, about the oppression of the poor, the injustice, the accepting of bribes, about the crushing of the needy. It's all about love, mm -hmm. or rather the lack of it. Right. right? right. It's about the lack of love. Because this is what God said through, through John, in the first letter of John, 4, verses 20 and 21. Better get this. Mm -hmm. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Yes. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. How do you know that you have love for God? Because you love your brothers. You love your sisters. It always comes back to the relationship and righteousness. Yes. Okay? So our Lord, who so many think is pleased by rituals and relics, mm -hmm. will now proclaim, in going on in Amos to verse 23 to 27, mm -hmm. take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not even listen to the sounds of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Did you present me with sacrifices and grain offerings in the wilderness for 40 years, O house of Israel? You also carried the Sikuth and the king, your king and Kion, your images, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will make you go into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Well, I, I we don't have enough time to get into that now, but we'll talk. And by the way, the King James uses a couple of other names for those false gods. Okay. But the fact is, I'll tell you what God was looking for. Because David, a man after God's own heart, said it. A broken and contrite heart. That's the sacrifices yes. of God. We need to do what Paul said and examine ourselves to make sure we are in the faith. Mm -hmm. That we are, our lives are showing and expressing and living the love of God that's been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. This is a perilous time. Oh, this is not a game. And religion is not about getting dressed up and going to church on Sunday. It is about the love that you have for God and for others each and every day. I, I pray that these words will stir your spirit. Yeah. That you'll go have conversations. Listen, what I say is not important. You should be testing what I say. It's about what God says. And you should be having conversations with the Lord about the things that we're saying here. In Jesus' name. God bless you and goodbye. Till next time. See you then. Not all get cross till my trophies are the best.